coming back for his church. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. I want you to know, church, that Jesus Christ could come this month. Or he might come next week. Or he could even come... But no matter how popular it may be or how sentimental it is in your Christian community, if the rapture's not in the Bible, then it absolutely needs to be left behind. Guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome back. Um, as we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button as we start. Today, I got a topic, the left behind um, from the churches. Is it true or is it false? Now, like this right here, um, I'm going to start by saying that I think in the in my people, my people as Seventh Day Adventists, we have some truth part of it, and I think the rest of the churches have some truth to it as well. Meaning, the church, the other churches, they believe that there's a secret rapture, which Bible does not speak about at all. And us as Seventh Day Adventists, we do not believe there's a secret rapture. At the same time, we believe that those that are left are basically, are, are basically in heaven and those that are taken are dead, which I don't think it is true from the Bible, from what I understand from the Bible. And the churches believe that left behind thing, which I think is actually true. From what I understand, what I found is actually truthful, meaning no secret rupture, which is true, and the left behind true so let's actually get into it right now coming back for his church the bible says in matthew chapter 24 verse 42 watch therefore for you do not know the hour your lord is coming i want you to know church that jesus christ could come this month or he might come next week or he could even come <laughs> But no matter how popular it may be or how sentimental it is in your Christian community, if the rapture's not in the Bible, then it absolutely needs to be left behind. Hello, friends. I got a good one for you today. Oh, this is good. This is so good. <laughs> well, the reason why this is so good is because it's crazy that the Adventist faith is oftentimes ridiculed, made fun of, yada, yada, yada for their teachings, right? But when you examine their teaching from the Bible, you realize, whoa, they kind of had it right, right? Well, this is one of those videos. Here goes a Sunday keeping pastor. He is realizing that the rapture is not in the Bible. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, you just found out about that? <laughs> like, uh, the secret rapture you're talking about or just the rapture as a whole? Anyway. Having said that, I'm going to listen to this video because it's pretty good when you know you know what you know and you study what you study and you know what the scripture says. You don't have to get all frustrated with people when they don't believe what you say. As long as you have the truth on your side, you always win. <laughs> it's like even when the majority forsake you, you still win. People believe all kinds of things that aren't actually in the Bible. For example, the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden is never identified as an apple. The Bible never True. says it was a whale that swallowed Jonah. True. The Gospels don't say how many wise men visited Jesus after his birth and the rapture. Well, that's actually not in the Bible at all. Let me explain. For many Christians, especially in the United States, the rapture is believed to be an indisputable doctrine of our faith, right up there with the virgin birth and the resurrection. Many have been taught that someday, in the twinkling of an eye, every true Christian will suddenly disappear, caught up into heaven with Jesus, with only a crumpled heap of clothes remaining. The rapture is how Christ will rescue his people from God's judgment of the earth, but everyone who's left behind will face the terrors of the tribulation. 
It makes for a great story. That's why it's been made into so many books and movies over the years. The Left Behind series alone has sold over 65 million copies, with many reaching number one on the New York Times bestseller list. The evangelical industrial complex of movies, books, radio stations, megachurches, television, and conferences has so thoroughly disseminated the rapture narrative and made so much money doing so that few people stop and ask themselves the most important question of all. Is the rapture actually in the Bible? So let's look at the evidence. First, when thinking about the future, the return of Christ and the final judgment, many Christians turn to the book of Revelation. And you'd expect to find the rapture there too. After all, Revelation is like the Portland, Oregon of the Bible. It's where you find all the weird stuff. There's beasts and smoking bowls and prostitutes riding dragons and creatures covered with eyeballs. But one thing you won't find there is any mention of the rapture. Not a word. Instead, there are two other New Testament passages that rapture advocates go to. So let's look at each one and find out what they actually say. Okay, before I go on, I wanted to give a shout out to this guy who's making the who's making the um, reaction. I think he's Ken Host SDA Church. I really like his content because um, sometimes I watch his videos. But I think on this one, he and hopefully I am wrong because I, I hope that I'm not saying something contrary to the Bible. I think he, as well as many other Seven Avenues. They don't actually go deep into that verse to see what the Bible actually says. Which this man who's making the video, the white guy, um, the bald guy, I think he's making the same argument that my people are making, which I think is also not totally correct. But let me let him finish everything and I'll talk about what I found out for myself. The first is Matthew 24. In this chapter, Jesus is talking to his disciples about being vigilant for his return because he will come suddenly and unexpectedly. And verses 40 and 41 are where we get the famous rapture language of being left behind. Jesus said, Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Well... There it is, just like in the movies. One person gets raptured to heaven, and the other is left behind to face the tribulation. Well, not exactly. You have to read these verses in their context, because what comes right before is really important. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. And that is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill, one will be taken and the other left. Jesus compares his second coming to Noah's flood. In that story, Noah and his family were the ones left behind and everyone else was taken by the flood, which was God's judgment. So, when Jesus says when he returns, one will be taken and another left behind, the one who's taken isn't being raptured into heaven. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I just, I'm, just, I'm just like, I'm smiling over here because... My friend, we have been saying this for years. <laughs> you call us false prophet. Oh, you don't believe in this. Oh, you don't believe in that. I'm like, a little bit of exegesis and hermeneutics could go a long way. A little bit of contextual study could go a long way. A little bit of text proof Bible study comparing spiritual things with spiritual could go a long way. When you just simply read what the Bible says and you compare the rest of the scripture with the weight of evidence, making the argument for what it actually says without inserting your opinion and sechesis, keep your thought out of the text. It's amazing what you will discover. It's amazing. The Bible is beautiful and it's clear. <laughs> but, you know, you know it's, Anyway, let him finish. Let me stop talking. It's just, it's so good to listen to the truth. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
So basically, this argument right here is what most people actually use on a regular basis when it comes to the um, taken or left, meaning because the Jesus says at the time of Noah, so shall be the last days, and when the flood came and took them all away, and so at the end, one shall be taken and the other one left. And we just look at the, um, in the context of that, it would actually mean that yes, those that are taken are dead, and those that are left, they are left alive with Jesus Christ. But I, I did some extra, extra Jesus um, to understand what Jesus is saying here. Let me say this. What does it mean when Jesus says, one shall be taken and the other one left? But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the day of, as, as in the days in the, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving the marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. You see here, I, I put in bold the word took away. So also will be the, com, the, son, the coming of the Son of Man be. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two men will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other one left. Now, I want you guys to understand, the word in, in verse number 39 is not the flood came and took them. The word is taken away. And then the word in 40 is taken left. So it's not that the flood took them, but the flood took them away. Now, I did some little extra Jesus lyrics to understand more on these verses. And that's why I say, I think on this one, each of us have some truth and some error. I do believe that those that are, there's no rapture, like Adventists believe there's no rapture, and the other one believes that there is a rapture, which I think is not true. I don't believe that those that are left or with Jesus, like we as Adventists will believe, I think we, those that are taken or with Jesus and those that are left are actually left behind. But let me get into it and let's see all together. So we're going to look at the word took, took away, taken, and left. So for the word took away, the, the Greek word for took away is um, to remove. That is, that we already know, the, 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 the flood took them away. So the flood destroyed them. Actually in the French version, in the French version, because I also speak French, the word here we use for took away is destroyed. Now, let's look at the word taken. The word taken here is from the Greek word paralambano, which means to receive from, I take from, I receive from, or I take to, I take with me, I acknowledge. So in a sense, and then the word left here means, uh, from the Greek means, aifame, which means to send away, to permit to depart, to forgive, to let go, to suffer, to remit, to release. Which means, in a sense, from what I'm understanding, when Jesus comes, he's come. Because first of all, Jesus is coming to receive his people. He is coming to take his people with him. That's why that word here is paralambalo, which means to receive from. He is Jesus comes to do what? He's coming to take his people with him. Who is doing the taking? It is Jesus. Now, let me actually give you guys another thing. I looked at another translation. That's from the, that's from the Geneva Bible. Look at in verse number 40 and 41. Bible says, the two shall be in the fields, 
the one shall be received and the other one refused. So who's doing the receiving and who's doing the refusing? Because remember, it is Jesus who says, depart from me, who who commit iniquity, work without iniquity. I from what I understand, Jesus is coming, he will receive one and he will reject the other one. So I cannot understand for some reason, I don't think that those that are taken, they are dead, and those that are left are alive. Because we can remove, we can switch those words to one shall be received and the other rejected. And in a different language, because I also say I, I speak French, the word here, it says, I looked at my concordance, one is taken means accepted and the left means rejected by whom by jesus received by whom who is taken i think that and i think on this one we both seven day avenues and avenues i think we both have some truth and error and i do think the actual thing is in from what i understand is those that are taken they are taken with Jesus because Jesus is coming, basically, Jesus is coming to take his people. And those that are left, they are left behind and they are dead. But, guys, let me know what you guys think on the comment section below. Um, I could be wrong. Hopefully, I'm wrong. Um, but I don't think I am because from what I understand from the Bible. But again, this is my opinion from what I understand. From the actual word of God. So, hope to see you guys again. This is going to be what this is again the open for TV. Until then, bye for now.